everyone, welcome to the workshop where all the magic happens. Uh, so we have the latest e-bike project here, um, and this is a uh, Arctic, uh, an Airstream Arctic Cruiser e-bike, uh, which I believe is a relabeled version of the, the Triumph e-bike. Uh, so this is, I guess, a woman's e-bike, um, aluminum frame, which is good. Uh, big 700 uh, uh, millimeter tires and a 24 volt uh, motor in the front, brushless, uh, 24 volt battery, and one of those in hub gear switching systems here. So I bought this from Kijiji, uh, from a lady, uh, and like all uh, Kijiji purchases, um, it doesn't work. Uh, but she did, in all fairness, say that it didn't work. But she did say it was just a battery, but the bike was in mint condition, and everything was working fine when she last rode it, blah, 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 and it was just a battery. So full inspection uh, on this bike, and I can see for sure that uh, the battery is definitely bad, uh, and the controller is bad, and so that's the main issue. Uh, also, the front wheel seems to be warped, um, and also this chain ring guard is broken off, damaged, uh, but everything else seems okay. Um, I don't know if I took it for a ride or not, but usually these, these uh, gears are okay. So that seems to be what the issues are. Uh, so I went ahead and already purchased a um, third-party uh, controller uh, to replace the OEM controller. So the OEM controller obviously has non-standard uh, uh, connectors, so I'm going to probably just cut these off and uh, solder them on uh, to the new con uh, connector so that everything is nice and compatible. Uh, and the new connector will be uh, coming with an LED display system with a uh, pedal assist hookup as well. So this thing's going to get the works. It's going to get the new upgraded system, it's got the pedal assist. Um, I'll probably put a light and horn on it. Uh, and I'm going to have to 3D print uh, a chain ring guard for here, uh, fix the battery, um, and this thing should be brand new again. Uh, so I just put on this. Uh, uh, controller here, this uh, uh, third-party controller, and if you can, you can see this, but uh, this is a new controller, so it powers up, and uh, this is the new throttle I'll be using, uh, or I might re reuse the old one, I'm not too sure yet, uh, and there you go. So it is working. It's actually a nice little system got a lot of power, this little motor, so I think it's going to make a great little e-bike. So, um, uh, yeah, so I'm going to first start off by fixing this um, front wheel, uh, and um, then after that, uh, probably just do the uh, controller hookup, and then 3D print this, and clean up, clean up, clean up, oh, and of course repair the battery, and then she should be good to go.
Okay, I've been fighting with this ring <laughs> all night, and um, there's just too much warpage. I think something, maybe she backed, uh, backed over a car, backed over this with a car or something, because it's warped this way, it's warped that way. Even if I straighten it, still the, the sides are coming in and out. And uh, there's just something wrong. With it. Something happened to this rim. I don't know what, but this rim isn't usable. Anyways, so fortunately, I got two options. Um, I want to reuse this motor, and of course, this is a not a 26 inch rim. This is a big rim. So I have another rim that I might be able to just re-spoke with this. Uh, I also have this thing here. This is a, a shell of a, of a 700 um, millimeter wheel. Uh, this is for a more modern motor, but it looks like it might actually fit. So I'm going to see if I can just take the guts of this motor and put it in here, and then this wheel, just use this wheel. Yeah, let's see how that goes. Okay, that actually worked. The uh, housing is compatible. Now there's a little gap here, and probably uh, I can just use a gasket to fit over that. But uh, it uh, works good. You can see, works fine. Now this is uh, needs um, uh, adjustment, but it isn't warped. It just needs side to side. So otherwise, it looks pretty good, actually. Okay. So I'm going to take this out, clean it up, replace the grease, get a gasket, screw it in, clean it up, clean it up, clean it up, balance it, then put the tire on, and then throw it on the bike, and then double check everything's okay. All right, the wheel is done, and actually turned out pretty good. I uh, chewed it up as much as I could, and uh, spins straight, as you can see. Uh, so new rim, uh, old motor, uh, gasket I 3d printed so it had to be the right uh, width so I printed a few demos and eventually I uh, got the right one and uh, that's it um, nice straight uh, looks good so this is gonna yeah it's gonna work out good so let's try it back in the bike to make sure everything's okay with the motor and everything's uh, running smoothly and then we'll move on to the next part Okay, so the fender turned out pretty good. So these uh, rusty <laughs> uh, um, guide wires are now uh, painted nicely. I'll put that up. Uh, I'm not gonna put in right now. For some reason, this whole thing is caked in, in oil. I don't know why. I'm gonna have to degrease this a whole bike. Anyways, I'll do that in the garage, but uh, it's gonna look good. Um, so I decided to put a big honking light here i had this from another project and never use it this is super bright super powerful uh so it'll it'll just be mounted here and i'll be reuse um the arduino uh, speaker from the previous project and i'll 3d print a bracket here and it'll mount there behind the light uh, i was going to put a bucket or um, yeah a basket on this thing but the basket would block the light so i it is a woman's bike, but I'm not sure if a basket would, would sell. I, I'm not exactly sure. Um, but anyways, I'll just put this light on there, uh, put the horn, um, put the fender back, and that should be the end of this build. 
Um, I can't reuse the OEM throttle because the OEM throttle has that uh, medium uh, full low lights on it and this controller doesn't output those signals. So, but the statistics, the battery stats are on the display anyways. So you don't really need that. So instead I'm gonna use this cool um, throttle. I got a bunch of these at an auction. So um, you have your throttle here and then you have a green button and a three speed button. So I'm gonna repurpose these such that this will be a light switch and that's gonna be your horn. So that's gonna be one cool all-in-one throttle, horn, light, switch. Um, and uh, now I'm just gonna wire these up uh, in a way that I can reuse that. And then basically leave the wires dangling here and then hook these up. And um, yeah, that's it. Okay, so this is the throttle that I'll be using. Seems like it's a generic part. And the connectors uh, are fairly generic. So if you do the uh, pinout, uh, this speed selection, uh, when it's on speed one, actually the first two wires connect and then you click it on speed number two, uh, actually there's no connection, and speed number three, it connects the last two. So the default behavior is, if you don't have this connected, like a lot of controllers do have the speed section, if you don't have anything connected, uh, it's actually defaulted to speed number two. So you're not getting the maximum speed unless you actually hook it up uh, and short these two wires together and then you get speed number three. Anyways, interesting, whatever. Uh, and so the horn is basically a push button horn. So how I'm gonna connect these together is I'm gonna lop off this one here. So you don't need three connectors, you just need two, the throttle and then this uh, th triple connector here. Uh, so I'll keep the middle connector here. So that will go into the speed wire. Uh, then I'll connect the upper and the lower ones together and feed that to one so that if you're on speed one or speed three then the lights will turn on but if you put on speed two uh, then no light will turn on and then the horn is going to jump this middle wire and come in and then the output will go here so essentially you have light here horn here and we're going to drive the battery in and uh, ground so we're going to run a, a, a two wire from the uh, from the battery connector as battery ground and then that will go to the horn connector and then we'll go to the light connector and that should do it okay so this is the speaker I picked up from a local electronics store uh, it says 24 volt uh, application uh, just a little piezo buzzer with driver uh, not bad uh, little sound maker um, and easy to use uh, directly with a DC so perfect for any bike the uh, only problem is how do you mount this? Uh, so I sketched up a 3D uh, print here. So this is going to be something that will uh, screw to the front post and house the speaker. Uh, so the bottom bracket, uh, just uh, put an M4 nut in there and the top is just basically going to be a M4 by I think 25 mil uh, screw. So that will screw in there and then for the bottom is going to be, or sorry, for the top part is basically we're going to uh, house this uh, unit in here. So essentially just sit in here with a cutout for the wire uh, and that's it. So when it's on the post, it should sandwich it nicely inside there and um, that's it. So we're gonna print that up and uh, that will be the speaker after the horn. Okay, so I was about to start wiring the uh, controller up when I thought I should just check these micro switches first uh, for the uh, the brakes and um, because it's got a three wire 
brake system. So I don't know what that means, but you traditionally there's just two wires because it's just a micro switch. Uh, so I tested it and uh, it looks like uh, neither brakes actually work. So I got the multimeter on on audio mode and if you just tried all the combinations of, of three switches, right, if you just, that's nothing, that's nothing. That's nothing. So this isn't doing anything. Uh, and both brake switches uh, <laughs> don't work. Okay, so this is... Uh, I have a couple more of these bikes, actually. So uh, this is another one from the bike, and the bike looks brand new. And uh, same lever, and this also doesn't work. So... I don't know. I guess all of these have the same... This is APC... Where's the other one? Anyways they seem to all have an issue so this is another pair uh, that i have this is a working pair so you can see i'm just hooking out these up to a, a switch here right right so if you have it hooked up properly then uh that's what you want right so every time you you do this you hear that noise right so this is working so i'll go ahead and replace these two levers on that bike but I don't know what is going on. They are, these are all bad. Unless there's something to do with this three-wire system. Unless, oh, maybe this is somehow getting power? Is this supposed to be getting power? Uh, is that how it works? All right, let me uh, let me play with this. Okay, so <laughs> uh, mystery solved. It is powered. So this is a powered switch, right? So you apply five volts to this thing, <coughs> and then uh, as you can see here, when you depress, there you go. It jumps up. Now it doesn't go up to five volts. <coughs> it goes up to something like 1.7, 1.8. But um, there you go. So it's powered. Mystery solved. Yay. Who cares? Uh, this doesn't work for me because this controller only has two switches. Right? So like how these normal, where's the other one? Anyways, how the normal uh, switches, micro switches work. So a powered switch is a really cute idea, but um, you need a custom controller for this, which I don't have. So these are all... Yeah, he's all garbage. Okay, moving on. So we're going to move on to the pass, installing the pass sensor, the pedal assist sensor onto the crank. Uh, so the one that comes in the kit is basically like this. So you have the uh, magnetic ring, which bolts to the crank, and then you have this sensor. And the sensor, like most of these kits, they have this metal bracket, which uh, uh, you bolt to the, um, um, the crank uh, ring. Uh, piece, whatever that's called. Uh, so you unscrew it and you put this on. Now this bike doesn't have that, so unfortunately you can't use that. 
and so we're down to basically trying to find a, a way to mount uh, the sensor. So I removed the metal ring um, and I placed it just on top of this shaft and it looks like when you rotate this it does pick it up. So this is a good location. It has to be close and then and tight tight to the to the wheel and, and tight to the center bracket as well. Uh, so obviously the only solution is to 3D print uh, a, um, uh, a solution. So this is what I came up with. Um, so essentially this is going to be a uh, snap fit. So it's going to just kind of, you push it and it snaps around the, um, uh, the, the main crank uh, shaft. Uh, and the sensor should fit inside there and I put some screw holes in the back so they should just bolt onto it. So that should be, that's basically the idea, that should just bolt onto there. Okay, so I'm going to print this up and let's see how well that fits. Okay, so the last part of this project, which is difficult, is this, uh, the uh, chain ring guard here. This is supposed to be a guard, actually it's supposed to extend all the way from over here to over here, um, but of course this bike is broken and I have to uh, reproduce one. Um, it's too long to fit in my 3D printer, uh, so instead I kind of came up with a different design which uh, utilizes um, the space a little bit better. So this is the largest volume I can oops, here, I can print in my printer and um, so this is kind of the design came up with uh, very cool very slick um, but difficult to do um, I had to do multiple um, printouts to get all the positioning of these two brackets and of course this bracket here um, because this is the the frame and of course let me see if I can pull up the frame here uh, bottom bracket shaft so this uh, uh, is the frame and of course the frame isn't parallel uh, nor, <laughs> nor is it circular so uh, getting that shape correctly getting that angle correct uh, has been quite a challenge multiple multiple prints 
but uh, eventually uh, I got it right and uh, and uh, works installs perfect so let's go right to that video Okay, so moving on to the final part of this build is fixing the battery, uh, which I thought was going to be easy, but turned out not. So as you saw in that last video, uh, that thing is packed tightly. Um, it um, was even it seemed to be unsafe to open indoors, so that's why I moved outdoors to finish it. Uh, and it was weird; it was like two packs of these weird batteries. So I did a quick Google search, and uh, apparently these are called. Uh, prismatic so three types of lithium or, or you know uh, of cells uh, lithium cells the regular circ uh, circular ones then uh, these things called prismatic which is basically square ones so these are square cells and um, it, they have a weird type of double circuit board type of thing so they had these uh, these are actually balance boards so there's a separate board which does balancing and there's another board which is contained this aluminum housing which does the actual uh, discharge overcharge and undercharge check uh, so and everything is kind of welded to these weird little batteries prismatic cells uh, so I did a test on them and they're basically off gassing and they're not doing well at all so they're they're toast um, I've never seen them before so uh, this is the first time apparently they're just old technology uh, anyways, so I'm going to replace them with 18650 cells. Uh, so I checked my um, uh, the, the geometry. I can fit uh, seven, so four times uh, nine, subtract one, is uh, 35 cells. So in a, in a 7S configuration, so one, two, three, four, uh, sorry, um, uh, 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 <laughs> 5P7S configuration. So this should give me a 10 amp hour battery and I'm going to arrange it like this. Uh, and this should fit inside the tube and this little cutout here will allow this uh, weird little BMS uh, to fit in there and I'll wire in all these little balance boards and everything into the space above. Uh, so it should all pack in there nicely uh, and tightly and this will be the uh, the arrangement uh, that I'll put on them so uh, I'll be using um, my uh, USB um, uh, iPad docks uh, as a battery source and I'll be welding these things up because uh, the fitment is pretty tight uh, so let's get that started Okay, all the batteries have been uh, removed, tested uh, on the, uh, the battery tester, capacity tester uh, at one amp and uh, recorded uh, the capacities. So they're all lined up from the smallest capacity measured to the largest. So the smallest is uh, 2155 uh, milliamp hours all the way to 2343 milliamp hours. And the internal resistances range f in the 40 to 60 range uh, so they're all essentially very balanced so this is gonna make a great battery pack uh, so uh, this is the shell so I went ahead and so and this will be the cage I'll be using uh, so basically I'll be putting this inside the cage 
uh, like so. So it's going to be going in like this. So, and that fits really nicely, as you can see here. Uh, and there's going to be room on the bottom and the top here in these little holes in these indentations. So I'll be running the wires up and down through there. So they made it, and I'll be re reusing the wiring. So that positive is on the bottom and negative is on the top, right? So, and then this is the BMS. I'll reuse everything. This is going to be sitting here, and these balance boards are going to be in here. So basically, I'll wire everything. So something like that. It's all going to be stuffed inside there, uh, and should fit nicely uh, and work uh, work properly. Uh, so the first thing to do is selection. So I know what the um, uh, the layout of this is going to be. Okay, and so this is the, uh, the the battery layout, as you can see that here. Uh, so this is the way they're going to be arranged. Uh, B minus that the uh, the top here, so that will be this here, and I'm going to arrange it so that uh, all the um, every cell, every every bank uh, is going to have uh, one of each, uh, so that they're all balanced. I'm not going to put all of them on one side. Right, so it's going to be um, uh, uh, a series, series seven. Right, so starting here. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right, and so this is going to be. Um, if we take a look here. This is going to be our battery minus. Right, so let's do it like this. Yeah, like this. Okay. So, which means battery minus is going to be here. Okay. So, one, two, three, four, five. Right. So, then we'll take the next one, and it's going to be in the next bank. Right. So, it's going to be right like that. Right. So, negative plus plus negative. Right. And the next one is going to be on the next bank which is here right and the next one is going to be so one two three this is going to be negative up
Okay, so I got the pack all welded up. Uh, turned out good. Um, so I always like to test things before I button them up. But because this thing is such a tight installation, I mean, I got to wrap this thing up. Then I got to run wires along these four sides. It's going to be tough to do all that and then test it. So the only thing I can do is basically do a full load test on this pack and just check the, the drops on each one. So I'm going to get this thing set up at about 12 amps uh, of load. So let's just uh, write this down here. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm going to do normal and then I'll do under load here. So let's measure the... So let's uh, put a load on this guy here. Okay, start test. Okay, this one is drawing 12, 12 and a half amps. So 12.5 amps. Okay, let's one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, three, three, five, nine, nine, three, four, four, nine, nine, three, four, two, seven, nine, nine, three, four, seven, nine, nine, three, four, eight. So it looks like they're all point two. What's this one? Three point two seven, three point five. Oh, okay, that was the lowest one. Yeah, no, it's point two. They're all about point two. Yeah, they're all about point two. Okay, so finished the, um, uh, the the battery. Uh, turned out pretty cool, as you can see. So the bottom balance board, I put the bottom, and all the wires I ran along the inside to the bottom. Uh, power wire from the bottom. I taped the BMS to the side. Uh, top balance board here, uh, and then um, the the part of the negative lead here. Uh, so everything worked out good, nice and tight. I tested it, it does uh, give power to plus and minus, so that's good. Uh, so just hooking this up, it doesn't have, it's about a half a charge. So instead of testing it on the bench, I'll probably, what I'll do is I'll do a full charge up, uh, make sure everything is nice and balanced. I can measure um, the individual banks from the balance board. So I don't need this thing apart. Uh, assuming, of course, I don't need to take it apart. <laughs> Uh, anyways, so this is everything, uh, resoldered, reconnected, uh, everything. So um, just hooking up all the pieces here. So this is the, the lock. This is the bottom. So this is the positive. So this will go to here. Uh, this one from the battery will go to here. Uh, this is the charge port. So this plugs in here this is the little thingamabob here this is the negative lead and this is the, uh, the display so like that so this now yeah so as you can see the light is on and when it turns off you can turn it on perfect right so everything is working everything looks good uh, so this is the original charger uh, with came with, which came with it, so I just plugged it in, uh, red light, uh, green light, so this thing should go yellow when you plug it in, so plug it in, and the light stays green. So it's possible that this charger is no good, right? Probably they're using this and this got this is probably the first thing to go then when this went and of course the battery well who knows when there was so much wrong with this bike but anyways uh should not be green so you know it doesn't change from green to yellow All right and plug it should go there you go should change color and it doesn't so i don't think this is working now it does actually read a voltage um i can see that the voltage does go up a little bit so I'm going to give this an hour on this to see what happens, but most likely this is not working. 
and I'll have to replace this. Anyways, you know, I've had, this is not the first time I've seen this type of charger go bad. I don't think this is a good quality charger. Anyways, let's see. Okay, so I uh, figured out <laughs> what the problem is. Uh, so as you can see, yeah, if you unplug this and plug this in, it stays green. But if you turn it off, and then turn it on, there you go, it's charging. So the fan's on, the light is yellow. That's the, <laughs> that's the secret to thing. You have to plug it in first, and then you turn on the charger. Ah, okay. But, well, you might ask, well, what happens if you unplug it while it's charging and then plug it back in? Well, then it turns off charging. Goes green, fan turns off, and if you turn it back in, if you plug it back in again, logically it should start up again. But it doesn't. <laughs> So it does some sort of a startup check when you turn it on, which it only does once. Anyways, it's funny because I threw out that other charger. <laughs> all right, so learning all the time. It is working. Okay, battery is done. Uh, it did really well in test bench. I measured uh, 13 amp hours. Um, well, actually, about uh, one hour and 12 minutes at 13 amps. So it's at least 13 amp hours, probably even closer to, to 14. Uh, amp hours, but then of course it depends on what the controller cut in and cut out is, is going to do uh, But basically, uh, let's say 13 amp hour battery very healthy these uh, little uh, auxiliary um, Balance boards did its job. I could definitely see the resistors getting hot and balancing the load So right now after an overnight charge it does a charge and it does a balancing and then it does a trickle charge And so these are all at between four point one five and four point two two volts between all banks so nice and healthy everything is good so i'm going to uh now do the final uh put together I'll put a little bit of uh, uh grease here because it doesn't slide down this case really well with this uh this stuff anyways so the upper and bottom circuit board uh are taped together with that um uh, captain uh, uh material uh everything is good Everything's good. So we're just going to slide it together. Hopefully everything fits inside the box. Let's see if it does. All right, that is everything. Turn it on. There's the four bars, and if we measure at the bottom here, we should get our full voltage out. 
29.34. Awesome. All right, we're done. Battery's ready to go. All right, we are finally finished this bike. Uh, let's go through all the features uh, and we'll start from the back. Okay, so uh, 28 inch tires, massive tires. Uh, this has got one of those cool three speed in hub gear selectors. So, in the hand, you can switch between three gears and they're all in the hub. So, as you can see, there's no external shifter or anything in here. Uh, it all goes through here. Uh, cantilever brakes, um, basically, and uh, 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 ring guard, chain ring guard, plastic, uh, custom made, uh, battery rebuilt, uh, lockable. On the other side, we have a pedal assist, so you can pedal uh, and the engine will kick in, or you can press on the throttle and that will kick in. Uh, so, brand new controller because the old one was bad. Uh, replace that, uh, replace the wiring, um, pedal assist to, is new, and also there's an LCD display instead of the old uh, power colors. Uh, there's seat suspension, there's front suspension. 250 watt motor in the front, uh, brand new rim, and a super duper bright uh, LED light. This can illuminate the entire city block at night. Uh, built in horn. Uh, the controls for the horn and the light are in the new throttle. Um, and that's basically it. That's basically everything. So let's take it for a ride and see how it does.